overlooking America's nuclear facilities. But it's not the U.S. keeping an eye on things, it's an adversary. In this special report, we look at how the Chinese Communist Party has gotten close to America's nuclear secrets, why that's a risk to national security, and how experts say there needs to be a fundamental shift in how we view the Chinese regime. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Weapons of mass destruction. America's nuclear facilities are intentionally placed in remote areas. It's partly a safeguard in case something goes wrong. But the other reason is to make sure adversaries can't find them. But it seems one country already has. Huawei had put its cell towers around America's nuclear missile bases and Special Operations Command and nuclear sub-base and it was clearly not a coincidence because they were not making any money on these deployments. That's John Pelson, author of the book Wireless Wars, China's dangerous domination of 5G and how we are fighting back. Now, where these nuclear bases are located is important. Many of America's nuclear missile silos are located in areas like Wyoming, Montana and North Dakota. The reason they put these locations in the middle of the country is because they don't want our enemies to be able to get close to them and see what's going on and hear what's going on. And a cell tower overlooking uh, a military base is a great way to know what's happening on that base. FBI agents have been monitoring Huawei gear used by these smaller rural telecoms providers that show up next to U.S. nuclear bases. Pelson adds it's no accident that's where Huawei gear pops up. And it was clearly a, a political and military move that they were that they were doing to put their cell tower equipment right around our most secure locations in the country. The Biden administration has opened up an investigation into Huawei. Reuters reports that's over concerns that Huawei cell towers are close to nuclear facilities and military bases in the U.S. and that they could intercept sensitive information and pass it along to the Chinese Communist Party. Reuters notes the Commerce Department opened the investigation and subpoenaed Huawei shortly after Biden took office. While the probe is ongoing, John Lenkart, former FBI counterintelligence executive focusing on Huawei, said back in March this year that when it comes to Huawei, ZTE and other Chinese telecoms companies... A lot of that is based on its overt functionality and the ability of the Chinese nation state to potentially collect and move data without anyone here in the, in the U.S. knowing about it. Since telecoms is so critical, how much access does China have to America's network? A map in Wireless War shows nearly 86 percent of the U.S. has coverage by Huawei or ZTE. But even that number doesn't account for all the areas covered by Huawei or ZTE gear. Those areas are usually focused in rural America. The Rural Wireless Association, or RWA, noted that as of 2018, 25% of their networks use either Huawei or ZTE. So what happens when critical infrastructure, like telecoms, is compromised? For national security, for other critical infrastructures like banking, energy, the telecommunication is the nerve center for all that, and it acts without that a lot of these other, our ability to respond in a, in a time of crisis from a national security perspective is extremely impaired. Back in 2019, FBI Director Christopher Wray said he believes China at large is the most significant counterintelligence threat we face. U.S. intelligence officials have warned the Chinese regime can exploit Huawei for espionage or to launch cyber attacks. These are capabilities that are very real capabilities that are there that a nation state would absolutely leverage in a time of war and a time of crisis. Now, let's look at what exactly China can do through Huawei. First, Pelson points out. If you make the equipment that goes into a cell tower, they're, they're not, Huawei's not running that network, but they made the equipment and you never let your hands off of equipment. That means even if it's a Western telecoms company that uses Huawei gear, Huawei has a say over what data that gear collects. When you install it, whether it's for Verizon or AT&T or whether it's for a rural family-owned company like this, the company that built it has to keep 
an eye on it and make sure they're giving software updates that if there's a service problem, they can look at the box itself and fix it remotely. You know, Huawei's not gonna fly someone all the way across the world to fix a remote cell tower, so it's remotely controlled. That remote control means all data collected is being sent back to. So when it comes to Huawei near nuclear facilities, how does that fact play in? So when you have that, you can tell, even if you can't eavesdrop, on what's being said over the connections. And that's a possibility, whether or not they can isn't clear. You can tell through something called metadata. You can tell who's there on the base that day. Who are they calling? So you know the numbers called in and out. You know who they text. You know where they are. You can tell the volume. You can see if there's a lot of activity going on. Pelsa notes there's instances of this playing out, not just around nuclear bases, but places buzzing with intel. You've got a Navy SEAL base and there's Huawei equipment around our Navy SEAL bases and you see there's suddenly there's a surge of activity and these senior people from the Pentagon are now on that SEAL base because you can tell who's there. Remember that. You maybe can't maybe can't hear what they're saying, but you say, why are these people at that base? A, a, a geopolitical rival or an enemy can say, we can tell that America is getting ready to do something. And you also have the possibility of saying, we're going to send a signal out here, and now that cell site's not going to work so well. Pelsa notes because most of the intel, including from the military, goes over public networks, the one in control of that network now wields a lot of power. The person, the company running the equipment, has the possibility of being able to deactivate it or throttle it, which in a time of crisis would be very damaging, very dangerous. We reached out to Huawei but did not get a response by airtime. Now, Huawei has fired back time and again that it's a private company, not some insidious arm of the Chinese regime. But is it? Rafael Fontana, Brazilian journalist and author of Chernobyl, a journey through the guts of the communist dictatorship. Fontana worked as a journalist in China. After returning to Brazil, Chinese telecoms giant Huawei hired him as a PR director. Through that relationship, he got an inside look into how the regime operates. When I was interviewed by the vice president of the communications in Brazil, I realized that he was a member of the CCP. A few days later, I attended a meeting in Sao Paulo, and all the top exec executives in the office were members of the party. And it didn't stop there. After a while, I traveled to the headquarters of Huawei in China, in the city of Shenzhen. There was no surprise. All the top positions in the company are occupied by the CCP members. And of course, the CEO, Renjin Faith, is himself a member of the party. Now, uh, we can think of something here. If all the members of Huawei, the top executives, are members of the CCP, who is controlling the company? I think you have the answer. Fontana also sheds light on how Huawei functions. It operates as a private company when it's uh, like building infrastructure and, well, trying to, to find new clients. But of course, all the negotiation comes from the government of China. And it's really dangerous because uh, Huawei and other big tech companies of China, they are working uh, for the, the CCP purposes. In other words, there are no private companies in China. And Fontana notes the Chinese regime leverages that power over other countries. The Brazilian government was blackmailed by the Chinese regime. Uh, if Brazil didn't allow Huawei to build the 5G infrastructure inside the country, Ch China wouldn't sell coronavirus vaccines to Brazil. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. We hear more from experts on the risks Huawei brings to U.S. national security, how the Chinese regime is setting up shop next to sensitive locations through other avenues, not just Huawei, and what steps are being taken to stem that threat. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Presenting the heritage of traditional Chinese martial arts, promoting martial ethics, and reviving the true tradition. The 2022 NTD International Traditional Chinese Martial Arts Competition Preliminaries will be held in New York and Taiwan.
on August 28th. The finals will be broadcast live online worldwide. Registration hotline 1-88-477-9228. For more information, please visit martialarts.ntdtv.com.